This is a completed gang tooling system for the Tormac 8L8 that I'll be describing, designing, and manufacturing and testing in this video. In the first part of this video, I'll be describing the design and manufacture of this gang tool system. In the second half of the video, I'll be demonstrating the use of this gang tooling system for the machining of three different machine parts. An aluminum standoff bearing for the AccuSlice system, a brass offset cam for the AccuWedge, and a brass sliding nut for the AccuWedge system. At the end of the video, I'll be describing the setup of the PathPilot software for use with gang tooling. A number of parameters need to be set up properly for the optimum operation of the gang tooling. Finally, after using the gang tooling for several projects, I do have some thoughts on how to improve it even further. So I'll be describing these plan changes at the very end of this video for the next and hopefully final version of this gang tooling system for the Tormac 8L8. Hello, I'm John Minura. In this video, I'll be producing some additional gang tooling and tool holders for my Tormac 8L lathe. Recently, I was producing some parts for my AccuWedge system, and I needed to make like 120 of these parts, and it required three tool changes to make every part. So it took quite a while, so I decided it was time to do some gang tooling uh, on the Tormac 8L lathe. In order to design a system, I want to get as many tool holders in here as possible. But the limit you have is the, the travel distance of the uh, sled. Uh, you only have like maybe four and a half, maybe five inches of travel. And uh, the tool rest, you can get in the way of the door on your system. So I made a, a bunch of changes here to try and figure out what I would do to um, make this system work. So I guess started, the first thing I did is I removed my old tool post holder, holder that I made in a previous video. Uh, in that video, I converted this uh, lathe from a, an OXA tool post holder to an AXA tool post holder just to give you additional rigidity in the system because I just felt that that OXA tool post was just not heavy enough and strong enough. So I removed that plate and I replaced it with a new plate. This plate is 4 inches wide by 12 inches long by 3 quarter inch thick. And my tool post will mount on this just by drilling and tapping holes in here to, to mount the tool post. I'm actually going to be mounting, be able to mount this in two positions. That's why I have two holes in here, so I can have a little bit of flexibility depending on what size diameter material I'm, I'm using. Now you are limited in this system uh, because you only have maybe four and a half, five inches of travel in the system. And I want to get as many tool holders in that distance as possible. Uh, most, of tool, most of the material I'm working on is three quarter inch, maybe three eighth inch. Uh, nothing over one inch in diameter, so I can make this system a little versatile to uh, machine these various size material materials. So what I'm looking to do here is first of all put a tool post up front as close to the front as possible. Now in doing that my handle will actually hit the door of my system. So the idea here is I'll put my tool in here, tighten it up, and then remove the handle, which is no big problem. It just gets it out of the way so it won't be hitting the door as you're using the system. Because I do want to get this as far front as possible to get maximum use, especially for my cutoff tool in the back. So I'll be mounting a tool holder up front on this plate and then I plan on putting uh, at least two or three holders for additional drills, drills and taps and center drills to drill into the piece. Now I also figured there's enough room in the back to put another tool holder in the back. So I could put up a, a, a tool up front here for doing my general profiling of my part, a tool in the back for doing my cutoff, and then uh, tool holders in the center for drilling and tapping holes in the center. And that would make uh, drilling this part easy. I'd probably do this in, with three or four tools and not do any tool changes. So that's what I'll be working on. So I'd spend some time laying this out. And the first thing I determined is this uh, four inch plate wasn't wide enough. Uh, these tool holders are a little bit too close to my uh, chuck. So I needed some additional length. So I'm making a new plate, which will be five inches wide. Uh, six inches is probably a little bit too big. I don't think I need that much length, but five inches will work fine. And I think I can get three tool holders like this into the system. Uh, so I'll be able to get like a, a center drill, a drill, and a tap. And then uh, I get a, and a tool holder in the back for doing cutoff. And depending how many of these I use depends on the diameter of the piece I'm cutting. I think I can get uh, you know three or four tools doing three quarter inch uh, stock. If I go to one inch or inch and a half stock, then of course I'm going to be able to use less tools. But uh, most of the work I'm doing is with like three quarter inch or five eighth inch stock and I should be able to use at least three or four uh, tools for this system. So my first step is to to make a plate and I did uh, redesign this 
This is the design I came with, up with, and I drew this in, in SketchUp, and I drill, I'm drilling multiple holes to make the system quite versatile. In other words, this front tool post will have two positions that you can mount it in. Likewise, the back tool post will have two positions, just to give you some more flexibility. And then these uh, uh, gang tools in the center can be stepped over in half inch increments to give you, again, more variation in what you want to do. So, triangular variable that you can have steps this way and also at least one step this way. Uh, so, and maybe even three steps. But right now, I'm just planning on two steps back and front. So, make it quite versatile and uh, make it easy to use and change tooling. Uh, and so, let me get started on machining this part. It's going to be quite a bit of machining. Machining my plate here, first of all, and then my, uh, my tool holders and then uh, adapting my um, tool post to the system. And I plan on actually uh, ordering a second tool post. I don't have it right now, but I'll be getting that in shortly that I can put my tool post, two tool posts on here. I'll start by using a fly cutter to level out both sides of the five inch by 12 inch by three quarter inch thick plate to get both sides flat and parallel to one another. All of the G-code for the machining steps for this project was created using the Centroid Acorn conversational programming for the CNC mill. Also to speed up the viewing in this video, I'll be interrupting and shortening the machining steps and viewing the machining operations at 20 times the actual cutting speeds. The plate has now been resurfaced on both sides, so both sides are now perfectly level and parallel to one another. So now the next step is to drill and countersink the holes that will be used to mount the plate to the Tormac 8L lathe. I'll be drilling and countersinking a total of six holes to mount the plate to the lathe. I'm using three tools, a center drill to accurately locate the position of the holes, a drill to drill the holes, and then an end mill to countersink the holes so that the heads of the machine screws will all be below the surface of the plate. The exact location of the mounting holes is critical. The existing screw holes on the main plate on the Tormac lathe are not all equally aligned in space from one another. So I spent some time accurately measuring these holes so that my holes in this plate would be accurate and would enable this plate to accurately mount onto the lathe. After the holes have been drilled, I'll take this plate back to the lathe and check the alignment of the holes and drill and tap one additional hole in the base plate. Okay, I removed the uh, previous plate and the cover plate. I'm now ready to install the new plate to make sure everything lines up. It said there's five holes in here and I added one hole which I'll drill back here. So after I get these aligned, I'll mark that hole and I'll start and I'll drill it and tap it. I next attach the plate to the lathe using number six metric hex head screws. I'll then use a center punch to mark the position of the sixth mounting hole at the far end of the mounting plate. I next use a five millimeter drill to drill a pilot hole for the screw and then use the number six metric tap to thread the hole in the base plate on the lathe. My new plate was then reattached to the lathe base plate to confirm that everything was accurately aligned. I just started my X position to the furthest out position. I mount my tool post. This is about where it's going to go. And you can see this handle now. If I close the door, the handle hits the door. So the plan is to lock your tool in place and then remove the handle like that. So that gives me maximum movement in the uh, X direction. So that's in the uh, furthest out position, and then I have to go all the way in to the inner position. And this would be where my back one aligns, right to about there. And then get my other tool post in the middle. So now I start drilling my holes. I'll drill the holes for the. I'm going to actually drill two holes to mount this, both the front and the back. Then I'll make the uh, the pieces for holding the tools and get those aligned before I drill the holes in the plate. Next, I'm drilling the four holes which will be used to mount the AXA tool post. Once again, I first use a center drill to mark the location of the holes to be drilled. Then I use a series of drills to enlarge the holes and finally use the tap to thread these four holes.
To machine the blocks to hold the ER16 chuck extensions, I first square the aluminum blocks on all six sides using the fly cutter on the mill. Next I mill out the corners of the blocks using a 1 half inch square end mill to create the bottom flange onto which I will later drill holes to enable this block to be attached to this new plate using the screws. I first of all drill the holes for the screws in this base section and then use a square end end mill to countersink these holes so that the screw heads will sit below the surface of this flange face. As a final step in the production of this gang tool assembly, I put the main plate back on the mill and drill the holes which will be used to mount the ER16 chuck extension blocks. I first of all used a center drill to mark the location of each of the holes and then I drill to drill the holes and finally a tap to thread each of the holes. These holes will be drilled according to my plan with two sets of holes different distances from the lathe chuck and then these series of hole sets repeated one half inch apart. These sets of holes will enable a wide variety of positions for the mounting of the ER16 chuck extension blocks. Well, I'm now ready to drill a 3 quarter inch diameter hole into these mounts into which I'll be putting this uh, ER20 uh, tool holder insert and this will go down 2 inches and then a, a locking uh, bolt will go in the end to lock it in place. Now in doing so, it's very critical, everything is perfectly perpendicular. So the first thing I did is I retrammed my system to make sure my lathe head was perfectly parallel to the table. It was off by a few thousand, so I readjusted that so it's right on, right on now, exactly perpendicular. I also put a, a gauge on here to check my vise. This is the vise I put mounted here, mounted it sideways so it holds this um, more evenly. And I made sure my vise was perpendicular to the travel of the, uh, the mill, both this way, both on this surface and on this surface. And so when I put my piece in there and line it up, put the gauge on it again and make sure this surface is perfectly perpendicular or parallel as well as this surface so everything should be true and then the last thing I calculated the distance from the bottom of my tool post to the center where my uh, drill bit is going to be aligning on the uh, on the lathe so everything is put this way I put a lot of time in making sure this is perfectly set up and accurate so it should be right on so I'm going to go ahead and lock this in place ready to uh, start our first piece. Now, I did check with my square, but the gauge I put in there is more accurate than the square. It's just a final confirmation and it's right on. So I'll be using multiple steps, using a centering drill first of all to mark the center, and then a variety of bits to enlarge the hole. Uh, one bit, a 3 8 inch bit going the whole way through, which which my tightening tool or bolt will go on to. And then the final three quarter inch mill will only go down two inches. I'm going to shorten this section quite a bit because I did spend a quite a bit of time making sure that I drilled these holes perfectly. So I first used a center drill to accurately mark the center location of the holes. I then drilled the first hole using a one quarter inch diameter drill. I then followed this up with a three eighth inch diameter drill to drill completely through the block, which is two and a quarter inches thick. I then used a series of larger drills to drill a final hole 5 8 inch in diameter but making sure that I had not drilled deeper than 2.0 inches into the block. Finally, I used a 3 quarter inch diameter square end end mill to mill a hole down to a depth of 2.0 inches. And this is the finished block. Notice that the 3 quarter inch large hole into which the ER16 chuck extension block will mount is not drilled the whole way through the block. It's only drilled 2 inches deep. The smaller 3 8 inch hole and the opposite side of the block will be used to insert a bolt which will enable this ER16 chuck extension to be clamped in position in the block. Okay, I have my uh, plate mounted on the, the lathe. As mentioned before, this is a 3 quarter inch wide by 5 inch wide by 12 inch long aluminum plate. All my holes are drilled. Uh, these holes here and these two holes here are for the uh, tool post holders with the front and the back and these holes are set for my uh, new uh, holder for drilling and tapping and these are set that I can move it back and forth and I can move it forward also so I have multiple positions to put these in and I can put multiple of these on the uh, system. 
So let's put the first one in and let's give it a test. What I want to do is check the alignment. So I have a pointed uh, piece in my chuck and I put a pointed piece in my uh, collet on the ER20, uh, uh, maybe this is an ER16 uh, tool post holder. And the way this is held in place is there's a screw that goes in the back and that clamps it and holds the, uh, the tool holder in place. Now. now I want to check the alignment of both of these. So let me move it in. And then I just verified that my height adjustment or my Y position is right on. And likewise I can add a second and a third tool post holder. Okay, and the distance between these two tools is about an inch and an eighth inch. Uh, and I have room for one more tool post holder, which I haven't machined the hole for yet. Here's the final complete gang tool assembly. It consists of two AXA tool post holders. The front tool post holder is used for holding my profile tools, and the back tool post holder will be used for my cutoff tools. Two ER16 chuck extension blocks can be used for using center drills, regular drills, taps, and boring bars. Now the system's all put together now. I have two tool post holders. I have three holders for drills and uh, center drills and taps. But I had to make a few changes to the system. <clears throat> the one change I had to take the light off the system because it was in the way of this. The other thing is this tool post is really close back here. So I gotta be careful there, and that's why I had to take the, uh, the light off because it was just too close. I can use probably four tools at a time. That's probably the maximum number I can use. Uh, and that's for doing three quarter inch diameter bar. Uh, I got enough space in here, uh, but I, I couldn't get uh, a, fourth, or a fourth tool in here. There just wasn't enough clearance. So I tried, but it just, just wouldn't fit. So that's the max I can get is uh, two center drilling type uh, units and two tool posts. This would be in a profiling, this would be in my cutoff. But I'm mounting my uh, cooling system up top here so it uh, sprays on a part and then that way it gets all the tools as they're going through. The other thing I did a prototype, I used some uh, Delrin to do my first run just to make sure everything clears because everything is tight here. You're working with really close tolerances you know, between your material and your pieces. And I had to make a few changes. I had to move my tools back I thought I could put my center drill forward, but it, uh, it actually, uh, this was in the way, so I had to move it back. Uh, but there's a lot of versatility with different holes that I have in the plate, so uh, it can be adapted to uh, different type of materials. But this works good for a three-quarter inch material and smaller. Well, anything bigger than three-quarter, you know, then I may be just limited to uh, the three tools instead of four. But let me go ahead and run this. Uh, I got my aluminum in here. I'll be making these uh, pieces. Yeah, I made my prototype out of Delray just to test it out. Now I'm ready to make a vial of aluminum. And I need about 120 of these. I got my total cycle time down now to three minutes, which is quite a bit uh, better than before because there's no tool changes. So first of all, I use a center drill to mark the center position to my, so my drill aligns property. Then I use a quarter inch diameter drill to drill a hole 1.1 inches deep into this piece. And I'm using pecking to drill that hole. Then I use my profile tool, tool to, uh, first of all, face off the face of the piece and then cut my profile in the side, which has multiple steps uh, in that profile to cut it down to its final geometry. And this video is sped up five times the actual cutting speed for viewing purposes. And the final step is using the cutoff tool to cut off my piece. So there's the final piece coming off the lathe. Again, nice finishes. Came out quite nicely. Now I just need to make 120 more of these. But I got my cycle time down to less than 3 minutes and that's with no tool changes. And here's the finished 120 parts made on the Tormac 8L lathe. Now 
My next project using this new gang tool system was the machining of some brass offset cams for the AccuWed system. For this project I used a front profiling tool, a drill, a number 832 tap, and a cutoff tool. I'm drilling a hole one half inch deep into the end of the brass bar and then tapping this using the number 832 tap. I then use a profiling tool to face off the brass bar, followed with profiling the OD of the brass cam. The brass bar is machined down to a 1 quarter inch diameter for most of its length, followed by a larger flange on the base end. Finally, the part is cut off using the parting tool. Again, this part was machined with no manual tool changes, and definitely it just sped up the production of these parts. The next project I'm making on my Tormac 8L lathe with my new gang tooling are these small brass sliding nuts for the AccuWedge system. These are the nuts that slide in the channel on the bottom of the AccuWedge system that enables you to adjust the fence angles. And these pieces are made from a brass bar. This brass bar is 5 8 of an inch in diameter and I did mill flats on the end of the bar. And the shape of this is not round but it's you know, oblong. After the uh, flats have been uh, milled into the bar, I place the bar in my lathe Set up my gang tooling, press the button on the uh, PathPilot software, and it runs all four tools here with no operator interference. In other words, it starts off by, uh, first of all, facing off the bar, trimming off the OD, and then drilling and tapping the hole in the center, and then cutting off four pieces, all with no operator uh, input. In fact, while that's uh, actually running here, I'm actually on my mill, cutting another bar, cutting the flats on so action. I'm able to run two machines at the same time while this is running. So I set my length on my piece to be cut. See the flats are on the piece there. And I'm using the gang tooling setup on the PathPilot software. And the steps are, first of all, using my profiling tool to face off my, my piece and then trim off the OD to get it round. Then I have my drill, which is number 7, a .201 inch diameter drill, a number 20, excuse me, a quarter inch, 20 thread per inch tap, and my cutoff tool. And notice my cutoff tool is upside down because I'm cutting from the back side of the piece. Now whenever I set these up, uh, I spend quite a bit of time, you know, testing it to make sure nothing's going to bump or interfere or, or, you know, break a tool. So you've got to actually run. In fact, what I usually do is I use a piece of uh, Delrin or plastic as a trial run to make sure everything works perfectly and then once it's working perfectly then I can actually run my pieces. Okay, we're all set to run now and I did set my uh, G30 position pretty close to the piece so it doesn't have a lot, a lot of distance to travel just to reduce time for running the piece. So I'll chime this piece as I'm running it to see how long it takes to cut four of these pieces off. I normally run cooling on all my parts I machine but for this uh, video I turned the cooling off to run this brass piece just so you can more clearly see the uh, steps in the machining process. Well, the first steps are, you know, facing off the brass bar and then uh, truing the OD, just a quick pass along the OD just to give a nice smooth outer surface. Then I use my, my uh, drill to drill a hole. And this drill is actually drilling it down to 1.1 inches deep. And then I use it, uh, my tap, this is a quarter inch, 20 thread per inch tap, which works really nice for tapping and then cutting off four successive pieces from that same drilled and tap bar. So I'm actually making four pieces in one setup. And, and here's what the final machine pieces look like coming off the lathe. I also want to include some notes in this video on the PathPilot software setup when using the gang tooling. There are a number of parameters that need to be set up to properly use the software. The first change is to go to the settings screen and select the gang tooling option. By selecting the gang tooling option in this settings screen, the tool changes will occur automatically during a method run with no interruption between tools. If you fail to click this option, then you need to manually step through the various tool changes on the PathPilot screen. This tool change stepping may be advantageous when first setting up and testing a method. But once all the parameters and steps have been verified, I do select this option so that the system will run continuously between steps with no operator input required, with the exception of the first initialization.
The cutoff or parting tool operates from the back side of the material being machined. Therefore, you need to operate the cutoff or parting tool in the upside down position on the back tool post as described earlier in this video. Next, you need to go to the offsets page and select the cutoff tool to cut from the rear. This is done by selecting position 3 or 4 for the cutoff tool position on the screen. This will confirm the tool is a rear position tool. Next, you need to properly set up the conversational programming screen for the cutoff or parting of your parts. Since the parting tool is cutting from the back side or rear of the material, all of your X positions must be negative numbers. The zero position can still be the center of the part being cut off, but the starting or outside X position must be a negative number. If you happen to leave this number as a positive number, the system will crash. Initially, I made this mistake, but thankfully the part I was machining was plastic, so no damage was done. This is the conversational programming steps for the last part that I just demonstrated in this video. Eight conversational program steps were required for this machine parts. The steps included a phasing steps, an OD turning step, a drilling step, a tapping step, and then four cutoff steps so I can get four parts required for this setup. By selecting the gang tooling option in the settings screen, the program ran continuously between each of the program steps with no operator input required between tool changes. This greatly improved the efficiency of machining with the Tormac 8L lathe. The gang tooling for the Tormac 8L lathe that I produced in this video did work quite nicely and I was quite pleased with its operation and it did save me a lot of time machining multiple parts for my business. However, after using the gang tooling for several projects, I do have some suggestions to improve its operation and I do plan on producing a revised and improved version of this gang tooling in the near future. All of these planned changes will be to the base machine plate. The first change will be to use an even larger base plate. So my next version will use a 6 inch wide by 12 inch long by 3 quarter inch thick plate. This is 1 inch wider than the existing plate. I need this wider plate in order to move the ER16 tool holders further away from the chuck. This is needed to use longer drills and boring bars. The next change will be to move the AXA tool post holder one quarter inch closer to the front of the lathe and closer to the door. This will give me some additional distance for spacing for more gang tools. Moving it one quarter inch will still work and not hit the lathe door. I'll also be moving the front and back AXA tool post holders an additional one quarter inch to the left and again to give me some additional room for longer tools with the ER16 tool holders. Next I'll drill some additional holes for mounting the AXA tool post in the center of the plate to give me some additional options for adding an additional AXA tool post in the middle of the base plate for other options such as using boring bars. Next I'm planning on adding at least one or two additional Z direction positions for the ER16 tool holders again to give me more positioning options for these tools. Also I would change the X direction spacing for the ER16 tool holders from 1 half inch to 0 0.40 inches, again to give me more options for the spacing of the tool holders. I also want to add some 1 half inch square by 2 inch long bars with screw adjustments to enable the easier adjustment alignment of the AXA tool post holders. Hopefully with all these changes I'll be able to use three of the ER16 tool holders on the base plate instead of the two I'm currently able to use. These changes will also give additional versatility to the system for future machining projects. If you have some additional suggestions for improvements for this gang tooling system, please give me a call or drop me an email. I would look forward to your suggestions to further improve this system in the next version. And once again, thank you for watching this video.